As an Indian food lover and a private chef in Las Vegas, I often wonder, has the magic of Indian food been lost in translation? So today, I'm going to explore the 10 biggest challenges that Indian restaurants face in the US and how I would solve them. Stick around till the end and I'll share my personal list of favorite Indian restaurants in the US. Trust me, you won't want to miss it. The first challenge I see is that the menu is limited and extensive at the same time. Now, let me explain what that means. It means that there are multiple variations of the same dish in the menu. And sometimes you see these strange combinations where you can pick whatever protein you want and combine it with the same sauce. Now, that is a strange concept that does not exist in Indian restaurants in India. It's almost as if they're asking you to build your your own curry, which is weird. Instead of offering variations of the same dish and confusing the customer, what I would do is have a small selection of dishes and have regional varieties. Trust me, there are multiple vegetarian and vegan options available from the breadth of Indian cuisine, and you do not need to offer the customer a vegetarian option for a dish that's not meant to be vegetarian. The problem with a giant menu like this is that if you have a hundred dishes on the menu, there's no way you're doing justice to each of those dishes and quality suffers. Which brings me to my next challenge, which is these restaurants are taking shortcuts and I can taste it in the final dish. What I mean by shortcuts is that they're not spending enough time cooking these dishes so that they develop depth of flavor. Time is an essential ingredient in Indian cuisine and if you take shortcuts there, it definitely shows in the final product. You'll be be able to taste the raw ingredients in the finished dish and that is not a pleasant experience for anyone. The other shortcut also relates to the point I made earlier which is the sauce and protein combination. Now a chicken dish has a sauce that is different from a dish that might be cooked with lamb or beef and that is for a reason because different flavors work with different kinds of proteins. So I also considered this as a shortcut where it's like oh well maybe we have a customer Customer that likes lamb over chicken, so we'll just throw the lamb into the sauce and give them that option to please them. But that does a disservice to Indian cuisine because those flavors are not meant to go with each other. A giant menu and shortcuts brings me to the third challenge, which is these restaurants don't have a vision or an identity. You'll often see restaurants that are Indian, Pakistani, Nepali, and Bangladeshi all at the same time. Now, these are are neighboring countries for sure, but they are four different countries and you cannot club all of their cuisines into one menu. That does a disservice to the nuances of the cuisine in each of these countries. For instance, Indian cuisine uses a lot of spices and bold flavors, whereas in Pakistan, they don't use as many spices. So while we might think that they are similar, which they are similar in a lot of ways, they're also very different and it's important important to highlight those differences when you call yourself an Indian restaurant or a Pakistani restaurant. And it's tough to do that when you are an Indian and Pakistani restaurant. I hate complaining without offering solutions, so stick around till the end to see how I would solve some of these problems and my list of favorite Indian restaurants in the US. Let's move on to the fourth challenge. This challenge stems from the reputation that Indian food is greasy and unhealthy. Now, this is not true at all. The food that I grew grew up eating was well-balanced and certainly not unhealthy. The problem arises from the fact that Indian restaurants might be taking shortcuts and therefore they might add too much cream, too much butter, or too much oil into their dishes to replicate that depth of flavor and richness that comes from investing time in cooking that dish. I have cooked butter chicken on this channel before and I only used two tablespoons of cream because the velvety richness of the sauce sauce comes from cooking the sauce for a while as well as straining the sauce and not from adding a ton of cream which dilutes the flavor and takes away from the essence of the dish. The next two challenges are based on reviews that I read of Indian restaurants around me. People were talking about really poor service and that they didn't feel welcome into the restaurant. Now this is the complete opposite of the experience you would have if you went to India. India is known for 
its hospitality. So I don't understand why these Indian restaurants have such poor service. People felt like they were being scrutinized for every move that they made. And there were also reviews complaining about the price. And I think that that comes from the lack of that feeling of being welcomed into the restaurant, as well as the lack of really good quality food. Now, I don't think people would care that much if the food was incredible, but the problem is that food in most of these restaurants is not incredible, and therefore the service has to be at least somewhat decent for a person to go back to that restaurant. The other thing that people were complaining about in the reviews was the quality of the food, and they mentioned that they got sick afterwards or that the food felt stale. You ate at an Indian restaurant? There you go. Now, that brings me to my sixth challenge. The problem that I see is oftentimes these restaurants will use very low quality ingredients. Look, I understand that running a restaurant is tough and you want to minimize the costs, but you don't want to minimize your costs at the expense of the customer. The seventh challenge that I notice with Indian restaurants in the US is that the food is often toned down or under seasoned. Now, I can promise you that Americans love flavor. I was very nervous when I was cooking these hyper regional, really flavorful dishes at my pop-up dinners. And I thought, well, nobody's gonna buy tickets to my event because I'm not making butter chicken. But I did not have butter chicken on any of my menus. And yet my pop-up dinners were sold out and people loved the food and they appreciated the fact that it packed a punch and the variety variety of dishes that they hadn't tasted before. I think what the Indian restaurants are trying to optimize for is pleasing everyone's palate, and I think that dilutes the flavor of the cuisine and takes away the joy that people can experience from the magic of Indian cooking. If you try to please everyone, you please no one. If you've made it this far into the video, then please subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out. The next challenge I see is the old, outdated, and gaudy ambience that most of these Indian restaurants have. Now, you don't need to spend a lot of money to create a bright and simple space. I don't understand why they use these cheap Indian looking but fake accessories that really makes the place look dark and dingy. And that is not welcoming to anybody. The other thing that I saw in the reviews about the ambience was that it was dirty and unhygienic. Including live roaches crawling in the kitchen, with inspectors shutting down the place for days. Now, I don't know if it's that specific restaurant or if it's a trend, but it certainly creates this bad reputation about Indian food, and I don't love that. This brings me to the end of the challenges that I've observed in Indian restaurants in the US. What did I miss? Let me know in the comments below. Let's move on to the solutions. The first solution is not to try to please everybody. Have a short, concise menu, but offer a variety of dishes. That's what I did at my pop-up dinners, and it resonated really, really well with my guests. A shorter menu also means easier execution, which means that you can pay more attention to detail, and each dish is beautiful and delicious. The second solution would be to pick menu items that the owner of the restaurant or the cook is passionate about. That would mean that there is a lot more love poured into that dish, which will show in the end result. If you think about channeling your grandma when you're cooking these dishes, trust me, they're going to be a hundred times better. The last solution I would offer is not to be afraid of flavor. Go bold, add the spices, add the seasoning, and make the dish how you would want to eat it. And trust me, people will love it. If the average Indian restaurant in the US implemented these changes, it would solve the majority of the problems we talked about today. Let's get to the most exciting part, which is my list of favorite Indian restaurants in the US. The first one is Sema. This is based in New York City, and they cook regional Southern Indian food. There is no lack of flavor here and technique, and it's an incredible variety, but it's not an extensive menu. The next one is a Bengali restaurant by the same owners called Adda. This is also in New York City, and they have some of these regional Bengali dishes that I really 
really, really crave, but I haven't seen anywhere else in the US. Sticking to the theme of New York City, Indian accent is another one of my favorites. Now, Indian accent has a branch in Delhi, India, and the New York City version is as good as the one in India. Let's move to the West Coast now. Rue is one of my favorites in San Francisco, and they combine modern cooking techniques with traditional Indian recipes. It's really delicious, and they have a lovely cocktail menu. You must check it out. They're also in Chicago and Palo Alto. When I lived in San Francisco, one of my favorite neighborhood Indian restaurants was called Curry Leaf. I looked it up and they still exist, and our favorite dish to get there was the Nihari, which is lamb shank that's braised for hours in warm whole spices. It was so delicious. Moving from the city to the peninsula, one of my other favorite restaurants, which combines modern technique and traditional recipes really well, is called Ethan. It's a southern Indian restaurant, and they have these in innovative fusion dishes on the menu that are absolutely delicious. Definitely not confused. The last one on the list is in LA. Now, this is called Spice Affair, and they have all the popular dishes on the menu. However, the chefs really take care while cooking these dishes, and each dish is impeccable. Let me know if there is an Indian restaurant that you think should be on this list. I know that operating a restaurant is really tough, and I absolutely absolutely empathize, but I also want people outside of India to experience the magic of Indian cuisine. If you love this video, you're going to love my video on the 5 myths about Indian cuisine. I'll link it for you here.